Good morning all. <clears throat> we are back and it is another Monday and uh, we had some fun last weekend, some last week and last weekend. Um, we had a little children in need game on Friday evening. Thank you for those of you who played. Uh, I actually played the first three rounds with Alan. Thank you, Alan. Um, we hadn't eaten though, so I had to go and cook after that. Uh, and meanwhile, everybody had fireworks in the background, of course, which was quite interesting. So we had nice eight tables. So um, that's £90 for children in need. We'll double that up and we'll make it 180 So that's nice. So we'll send that in to um, uh, children in need. And I hope you, those of you uh, who played enjoyed the game. Um, what else? Well, the teams was, was interesting on the Wednesday. Um, I think I was a little bit tired, if I'm honest. Uh, but there were some interesting hands. Got a few wrong, got a few right. <laughs> That's what Bridge is like, isn't it? Um, and next week, I'm off to the Old Barn on uh, for the weekend. So that's the Old Barn in Grantham, uh, one of our regular spots. So I hope a few of you are joining me there. We should have some fun. In lieu of that, uh, those of you who do come on board and play on the... Uh, and watch the Friday morning live. I am going to be starting the Friday morning at nine o'clock this week. Nine o'clock in the morning this week. For those of you who fancy it, it, of course you can still watch it at the normal 11 o'clock, but I wanted to do it live before I left to go to the old barn in Grantham. So, uh, so if you do want to catch me live, it'll be nine o'clock on the Friday. And we're still talking about being the partner of the leader. So looking at defence from the perspective of the partner of the leader. On the site itself, the main change, uh, main changes recently have been the help menu. The help menu. Um, and you can actually see that help menu whether you're a member or not, so you can see that. And I think it'll help people understand how the um, how the system works and how you can get the most out of it. Um, one element uh, a number of people asked about was um, my description of the Jacobi 2 No Trumps, and that is in the help menu underneath conventions. You'll see the standard Bernard McGee simple, the more advanced Bernard McGee convention card, and also then we will start listing the odd convention that we've talked about where I can describe the way that I, I teach it, as it were. Um, so you can see that. But do have a look then at that help menu because hopefully it, 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 it will help you understand the way the site works, whether you're on or you're not, because we'd love you to be on. <laughs> and the special offer of the week this week is the teams, the teams. Just one charity event at the moment in our charity box. That is a live event, I think, Sunday, the November the 14th. So uh, we don't have so many of those, but please do send in your charity events so that we can promote them. We really do want to do that um, because we would love to do that. And if you do need prizes or anything like that for a charity event, please do ask about that as well. We want to promote charities. We want to promote the raising of money um, by Bridge for Charities because it's something that Bridge has done so well over the last 30 or 40 years. Um, it's been a f one of the go-to things for charity raisers and hopefully once we're back to live Bridge it'll be the same again. So um, do please send us in the details. We can then promote them for you and I will try to remember to promote it um, with regard to these lives and, and bring them up. Okay, so last but not least, we, well, let's let's look at the pattern. No, I'm going to go to this here. This is what we had on Friday. This is what we had on Friday, the hand evaluation. So we're going to look at that today. Um, we usually come to, back to that after our seminar. So you are vulnerable against not. And you would be opening the bidding, I think, on this one. So vulnerable against not, and it would be your opening bid. But I want you to evaluate the hand and see how you feel about it. Um, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's exciting in many ways, shall we say. OK, so uh, you can decide what you would do with that. And... Um, 
just before we go to our strong hands seminar, uh, just to mention about the, the games, the members games that we're doing on, online at the moment, we're going to carry on, we're going to carry on this week as normal. So we will have the two eight board games and our two, two longer games on Monday and Thursday. Uh, and then we'll have two wheel bridge games on Friday, uh, Friday and Sunday. You can see all of that, of course, on our website. But I am, I am feeling that perhaps the best way to go forward is to consolidate those games. So from next week, I'm probably, I think we'll have one BBO game in the evening on Monday, and we will have one wheel bridge game on the Friday evening. Um, and then we might change again depending on how people feel. Um, but I think it would be nicer to consolidate the games and make sure we get reasonable numbers because I know a lot of you have been turning up for some games and there really haven't been many there. And every so often the games have gone ahead w w with too few people. So um, so it would be, I think, a better thing to have. We'll have the Monday game, as it were, the, BB, the Bernard McGee Bridge Monday game. And, and one on Friday. So, um, but do do contact me if you've got any thoughts about that. I'd be glad to have those. Okay, let's have a little look and see this. So, strong opening bits is what we're talking about the whole of this month. It is an interesting topic. Um, and it's interesting because I've seen some of the answers with respect to the, uh, the hand I've just shown you. So we will come to my answer on that in a moment. What I want to do just to focus today, um, we've got a lot of topics and some really interesting questions being sent in by email and please continue them in. Um, what I want to do is look at the Benji 2 Club opening today and just um, explain a couple of things about it. So the idea of a Benji two clubs is two clubs, two clubs is your strong twos. So it's not your strongest bid. Two clubs is when you're saying I'm strong partner, but I need some help. Okay. So generally you play a relay opposite that. And that's two diamonds. And the reason you do that is because quite often the two club bidder will have a two suited hand. He wants to show his major first and then rebid maybe his second suit. And if you respond something like three clubs or two spades or something like that, you change things. Now there is a reason. There is a reason why I say usually here. Uh, and and you'll, you'll find that out, okay? So auction usually starts two clubs, two diamonds, okay? So it's very, very rare that you don't do the relay, okay? And a relay is simply a bid that allows the, the, the partner of the bidder to bid. In a way, one way of putting it is, is in a sense, uh, a transfer is a similar thing where you make a bid and your partner's forced to bid, as it were. Okay, all right, so generally our two club bid in Benji is a descriptive bid. It says, partner, I've got a really strong hand, most often with long suits, and I, but I do need a bit of strength from you. I've got eight tricks in my hand, for example, but I need a bit of help from you, or nine tricks in a minor, okay? You can have no trump hands, and I discussed that last week again what I discussed last week was not necessarily the perfect way of bid using your strong bids, but the idea of always having the two diamond opening as game forcing, I think will suit a lot of players. Because if you always know that two diamond opening is game forcing, you don't have to worry about anybody passing. Okay, you know, that, you know even if partner has a minus one point hand, i.e. a yard with a 4333 three, three shape, they should carry on going as it were. So two clubs, two diamonds, and then I can bid my hand, okay? And that's beautiful, and that is the way the system works. So the two diamond bid is there for a good reason. The idea is, is two diamonds, what we call a relay, does not show anything about your hand. However, <laughs> I, want you, I want to show you this because it's quite important, but please listen carefully. Because what I'm saying is there are two basic options in response to two clubs. 
most of your hands are going to bid two diamonds and that allows the opener to show his hand. But actually, two hearts doesn't take up any space either. So what do I mean by that? Surely it does. It takes up one whole, one whole bidding level, oh sorry, bidding uh, card. But over two diamonds, if your partner was going to rebid two hearts, well, clearly if you are responding two hearts, he's going to be over the moon. So I think that in response to two clubs, you do have two basic options. You have two diamonds on normal hands with zero to 13 points, and I mean that many. You know, you can be quite strong in response and still bid the two diamonds, your partner shows his hand and then you get excited. But you can also use two hearts as a positive. No other, no other thing can you bid. So if you've got a good hand with spades, you still bid two diamonds because you need your partner to be able to make his bid first. But two hearts is allowed and it is useful to be able to do it. Okay, let me try to explain it by showing you an example. Okay, so there's no other options other with, with very few exceptions. And what I mean by that is if your partner opens two clubs and you are dealt eight spades to the king, queen, jack, ten, then that's the kind of thing I'd bid two spades on good partner. I know you need to know this. That's very different. So if you've got an eight card suit or something like that, the chances are you're going to want to play in it. So then you would show it. OK, but it should be that exceptional. It really should be that exceptional. OK, remember, if your partner's got diamonds, he will be very pleased you haven't responded to diamonds because he'll get to play the hand and that's the best thing. So it will go two clubs, two hearts, three diamonds, which it would have gone anyway. It would have gone two clubs, two diamonds, three diamonds. So you haven't used up any space. Can you see that? So if you choose to respond to hearts, you've used no extra space at all. Whatever your partner wanted to bid, he, he is not put out because remember, if you're showing hearts, you've got five or more hearts in a good hand and your partner had hearts anyway. I think we've just found a slam. OK, so don't. So, so what I wanted to do is explain it via this hand. OK. West is the opening bidder. And he chooses to open two clubs with this hand. OK, you know, I don't I mean, you could choose two diamonds. Um, I think two, two clubs is reasonable. You need a little bit of strength to make your game. So I think two clubs is, is relatively normal. What is really important, okay? Yeah, when I, it, it, seriously, if the bidding goes two clubs, two hearts, and your partner has a big hand with hearts, you're looking to, to bid seven hearts. So you're not that worried whether the big hand goes on the table or not. You are just very, very pleased to have started the conversation. It's gonna be very rare OK, very rare that that happens. But even if it does, you're going to be so excited. The two of you, you know, you're in a slam and you've got the chance to uh, to investigate for a grand slam. OK, so do not worry about that when you've got, you know, if if if, if, if you respond to hearts and your partner's got hearts, so, you know, here. But what's important is your only two options are two diamonds and two hearts. You're not allowed to respond to anything else. So with this east hand, it is imperative that the east hand bids two diamonds can you were saying okay the idea is uh, someone's saying if you're playing with a random partner and playing benji would your partner understand it i there is no nothing to misunderstand if it goes two clubs two hearts essentially if you're the only miss you know your partner will assume you've got hearts he'll be a bit annoyed maybe he thinks oh i thought you were supposed to bid two diamonds relay okay but it's not going to put him out in any other way other than that because you've taken up no space in the auction and that's the crucial element here. OK, you're not and it's difficult to understand. So what I want to show you is the wrong bid here. So imagine East bids two spades here. Can you see what a mess that makes of the auction? It goes two clubs, two spades. I'm going to rebid my hearts and I have a feeling it'll probably go three no trumps. And we'll probably finish the auction in three no trumps. The East player has taken up too much space here. It's so important. East should have bid two diamonds here. It goes two clubs, two diamonds, two hearts, two spades, three diamonds, la -di -da. And you'll have seen this, excuse me, that hand is taken from the big seminar. And as long as we've got enough time, West, given the space, is able to show both of his 
suits. Once again, two clubs, two diamonds from, from East, two hearts, nice, comfortable level, two spades, strong response, three diamonds partner my second suit and we find diamonds and we go flying. Don't forget, if you find a fit, notice the East hand in response to a strong two, which we regard as 20 points, is 10 high card points in a singleton. So East is gonna be excited and if we find a fit, off we go to a slam and the slam would be um, probably six diamonds. I mean, six, six ends got chances, but six diamonds is obviously the best contract. But I think if you make the mistake of responding to spades on the East hand, you get too high. So you've only got two choices in response to two clubs. The normal one, which is two diamonds. And if you want to just stick with that, do. But the two heart bid is quite key. So let me show you what I mean here. It doesn't disturb the auction. Okay. So this one would be, is, sorry, just this auction is two clubs, two diamonds, and then you just bid naturally. It's completely natural. Two clubs, two diamonds, nice and natural. Two hearts, two spades, three diamonds. And when you hear three diamonds, East gets very excited. Okay. Um, um, I don't know, probably brings out the Blackwood, to be honest. I mean, it, it's hard to find a more practical bid, but, but we, that would be slam bidding and I'm not going there. Okay, so the key here is hearts wouldn't have made any difference to that auction. So let's change the suits around. Two clubs, two hearts. It doesn't disturb the auction. So here it goes two spades and it would go um, probably um, two no trumps or three hearts or whatever it is. Okay, or even three diamonds from East now. East could show his second suit three diamonds. I think that's reasonably neat. And now, obviously, it's West's turn to go flying, OK? So, so often in these auctions, it's important to find a fit if there is one. The advantage of the two heart bid is that it can sometimes facilitate the auction. So in an auction like this, two clubs, I, I like a two heart response with the East hand. It's fine if you want to bid two diamonds is normal Benji, but I, what I'm saying is that two hearts is an available bid, okay? Doesn't use up any space. And the beauty is if you bid it, well then actually your partner will often be in a position just to agree hearts there and then. So if you're over your two heart bid now, East is happy, so West is happy. West is gonna play in hearts. So he would agree hearts, three hearts. Remember, that's game forcing. Okay, once you've got the positive response, you know, so two hearts is an unusual, but it's a positive response. Three hearts, game forcing, and we could have a conversation. Okay. <clears throat> for me, it would be seven or eight points and at least five hearts. Someone's saying, what do you need for this two heart bid? Again, it's not standard Benji, but because it doesn't use anything up, I don't think it's gonna confuse anybody anyway. If you sit down with a random partner, what would West think that two hearts meant? Well, all I can think is that it shows hearts. Okay, must show five. Okay, remember, the usual response is two diamonds. It's just a relay. So you need an excuse to bid two hearts. So it should be five good hearts or six of them. Okay, really should be. So most of the time, I'm just gonna bid two diamonds. Do you understand? So I'm just gonna bid two diamonds on the hand. Remember, two clubs, standard, standard, standard thing is two diamonds. So two hearts is an exception, but it must show at least five. It must show five good hearts or six of them. You know, you've got to do it for a reason. Otherwise, just do the normal bid. The beauty is, though, sometimes it's going to allow you to very easily find your slam. Three hearts agrees the suit. To be honest, I guess West might just bring out the Blackwood. But it would go three hearts, three spades, cubid from east. And now certainly that would be brilliant for West and he would bring out the Blackwood. Um, <clears throat> and I think you'd be happy enough playing in, um, I think it's probably six hearts is high enough here. I think uh, it's optimistic to, to go for seven. I think six hearts is, is, is more comfortable and probably a better contract, I think. Okay, so again, if you didn't play that, it would go two clubs, two diamonds. I don't know, what would West bid? Maybe two no trumps, I suppose, then a transfer. And I think it would be a little bit more awkward finding your slam. 
Whereas I think two hearts, basically West is thinking oh, I'm going to go for slam straight away, to be honest. So he might have just goes two clubs, two hearts. It might even just go four no trumps just to check your partner's got the king of trumps. OK, um, but Q bidding is probably slightly better. OK, so that is that. Again, have a think about it. Have a think about it. Uh, the idea is it is that it is an option available to you. The idea of two diamonds is the standard relay, but because two hearts doesn't will never disrupt the auction. OK, um, you're not causing any problems. OK, so in many ways, people are asking questions. Well, for a positive, what does it mean? Whatever. For, essentially, what? For you, it's got to be what you feel is a positive. I mean, you know, most of it's going to be obvious to you. So if I had jack to five hearts, I don't know, and, and, and six, seven points, I'm probably just going to bid two diamonds. It's the normal response. Just let it go. I'll show my hearts later. But I'm trying to say to my partner over his two clubs, look, I've got a nice heart suit here if, if that helps you out in your bidding. OK, and it's sometimes, as I say, it will. Um, it'll allow us to find uh, I fit very early, okay? Okay. But yeah, I would, you know, generally, if you don't have an ace or king in your hand, you're that, you're not exactly excited. Um, I suppose if you had queen, jack, queen, jack, queen, jack, queen, jack. Remember, you have taken up no room. So if the bidding goes two clubs, two hearts, your partner just rebids three clubs if your partner's got clubs. Your partner just rebids three diamonds if your partner's got diamonds. Yeah? Okay. So, you know, that you've not taken up any space. If your partner had spades, he would just rebid spades. You've, and if he was going to rebid no trumps, he would rebid no trumps. You've not used up any space. I guess you could say the, the disadvantage of the bid in a way is that if your partner has a simple balanced hand, um, then perhaps you're going to end up playing the hearts with the weaker hand. So there is a slight disadvantage there. Instead of two clubs, two diamonds, two no trumps, maybe a transfer now. You know, you know you but I think you'll find that the advantage of it will weigh up. So the other options here that I wanted to mention today um, is where you have a solid suit. Okay, when you open a strong bid, okay, like two diamonds for instance, game forcing, there is now no reason to make a jump bid. It makes absolutely no sense to use up any space unless you don't want to talk anymore. Now that sounds odd, doesn't it? But what I'm saying is, if I do not want to discuss the nature of the suit, this is what you do. Three spades ends the conversation about the denomination. Doesn't end the conversation. Please don't stop, partner. I opened two diamonds. So we're getting to game, but it says, partner, I do not want to discuss the suit we're playing in. We are playing in spades. So you will have a completely solid suit. Okay, either. I mean, it doesn't have to be ace, king, queen, jack solid. It could be king, queen, jack, ten solid, as it were, because you can find out about the ace of trumps if you need to in another time. But you're basically saying, I've got eight solid spades or seven solid spades. If it's seven, it's probably ace, king, queen, jack, ten to seven. You don't care what your partner's got. You do not care if your partner has a void in the suit. You still know that you want to play with that suit as trumps. OK, it's a very rare thing. It's important to understand it. If you are in a game forcing auction and you jump, you're wasting space. Why? Because you want your partner to know we are now not discussing the suit. Let's look at an example. OK, so they're not going to come up that often, but a hand like this. OK, here you are sitting with a beautiful hand. Yes, I guess on a bad day you could just about. No, I don't think so. You're not going to go down in game here, really. I mean, it would have to be a silly, silly day. So we're going to assume we're making game and that's how I'm going to open the bidding. I'm going to open the bidding two diamonds here. OK, so there's two diamonds. My partner makes a negative response and I want to say to my partner, I am playing in spades. There's two reasons I want to do that. OK, I don't want to have a chat with him about his best suit. But the most important reason for doing it is I would love my partner to tell me if he has a high card in any other suit. So by jumping to three spades here, I'm not just saying we're playing in spades. I'm saying, partner, we're playing in spades and I would love you to tell me about any high card you have in your hand. Does that make sense? And most of the time he'll just bid four spades. Remember, he will not pass. <laughs> okay. 
So even with a void, I expect my partner to bid four spades in. But if my partner has a king, I would love him to tell me. Imagine he bid four diamonds, for example. I can now bid six spades. Okay. And that's the idea of this suit setting bid. It allows your partner then to show you any high card. Not length. I don't want to know if my partner's got jack to six hearts. It's no use to me at all. Does that make sense? So if I don't set the suit, my partner will start showing me his length, not his strength. I just want to know where his high card is. Does that make sense? Okay, so partner shows a king or ace by bidding the suit with nothing. He simply raises to game. By nothing, I mean queens. We're not interested in queens and jacks, you see. So let's look at a hand here. Two diamonds. Sorry, it's a bit smaller than spades because I had to fit them in. You might notice that there. Two hearts, negative. Three spades. Partner, I have nothing to show you. Four spades. Okay. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. If partner had something to show me in clubs, partner would show me clubs. And of course, I wouldn't be interested. I, I would be disappointed and, and would not be excited about going any higher. OK, so four spades. Clearly, we could have just bid it. And however, of course, your partner might have this hand. And that's the key. That's sort of what we want to happen. We want our partner to tell us, you know, if he's got a king. If he had the king of hearts, you might probably gamble on a slam as well, to be honest. Um, you know, you'd have reasonable chances. Two diamonds, two hearts negative, jump to three spades. What does East bid now? And of course, he's being invited to show a high card, an ace or king, so he would bid four diamonds. Okay, And that's enough for me. I'm just going to bid, well, we might as well check for kings. So we'll bid four no trumps, get the zero we expect. He might have shown us the ace of clubs, but of course he would have done a positive with that. So zero. I would actually ask for kings because he might have two, I suppose. Um, but he bids um, six diamonds, which I play as showing the king, but it's also the answer for one. And we finish in six spades. OK, um, now you can gamble if you want, but it's lovely to be able to bid a contract where you believe that you have those tricks there and then. So you can almost claim a trick one. Uh, and of course, here you would be able to you'd, you'd win the lead and whichever it was, and then just draw trumps and claim, giving the opponents one heart trick at the end. OK, remember, this isn't going to come up often, but it's just to show you this idea. OK, so. So that was that was key card Blackwood, uh, Mark. It was key, it could have been any form of Blackwood essentially. Um, basically, you're getting zero first. Remember, because your the the trump suit was spades. Okay. Um, generally, Steve, someone asking if if the responder can show shortage. <sighs> Not generally. I guess if you've got a lot of trump support, which is going to be unusual, but imagine you had four spades in a singleton, then you probably could because you'd believe that it doesn't matter if partner thinks that it's a king because you'll make up for it by roughing. But you do have to have a lot of trump support. So, you know, because if you've only got two trumps in a singleton diamond there, clearly it's not going to be helpful for your partner. But if you have an unusually long, you know, four little spades on that auction and a singleton diamond, yes, why not? You, you feel that you've got something exciting for your partner. So it must be shortage and the potential to make a lot of roughs with that shortage. And that, that's quite crucial there um, because otherwise, clearly more likely Whenever your partner makes this bid, you're going to be quite short in the trump suit, in which case the shortage isn't generally going to be worth enough to, to show it to your partner. So there's just some thoughts. They're not easy. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's not easy. So um, you don't necessarily have to take them on board. The, the jumping bidding is fine. Next week, we are going to look at bidding hearts using Benji. Um, and we will see that if you had that exact, exact same hand as opener, but with strong hearts, we'll actually be choosing to open two clubs and then jumping to three hearts. And of course, the good reason for that is that you want to be playing them as the strong hand. So remember, when you've got a really strong hand with hearts, quite often you may, as we'll talk about next week, choose to open two clubs to make sure you're the declarer. Anyway, that's what will come up. What are we doing next? We are looking at that hand evaluation hand. So, oops, no, that's the bidding quiz. That's coming up later. <laughs> OK, here we go. So we had some interesting thoughts on this one. Um, those of you who play, and um, if you're playing Benjamin, you want to open two clubs. I don't think you're allowed to. 
um, I'm afraid. Uh, you'll have to ask um, David about that, but I think you need five quick tricks or a few more points. So you shouldn't really be opening these two clumps. So there's a couple of important elements here. First of all, vulnerable against not. So if you open four spades at this vulnerability, what kind of hand are you showing to your partner? So if you open four spades at this vulnerability, what kind of hand are you showing to your partner? Notice you are vulnerable against not. So the answer is not weak as such. It is sort of weak, but not weak. At this vulnerability, you should be within one trick of four spades, but you should have a weak hand. Well, actually, I think that's what we've got here. We only have two tricks in our hand in any contract other than spades. So if your opponent's playing five clubs, five diamonds, or even five hearts, you just have two tricks. Can you see that? Okay, so that's what's interesting here. Now, at any other vulnerability, this is a tricky opening bid. I don't think you can open four spades, it's too, maybe too strong. But at this vulnerability, it is reasonable to open this hand four spades. And the reason we're doing it is because it's a preemptive style hand. Yes, it's strong, you've got nine tricks, but you've only got nine tricks playing in spades. Whenever you have this massive disparity, nine tricks in spades, just, just two tricks in hearts, sorry, two tricks in any other contract, then you should really be thinking about opening a preemptive style opening. And so I love a four spade opening on this hand. Okay, as I say, at the vulnerability, don't feel you're going to miss huge numbers of slams because partners should be thinking you're between eight and nine tricks. Okay, you should have between eight and nine tricks. So if you have a solid eight card spade suit headed by the king, at this vulnerability, you should probably only open three spades. So if I take away two hearts here, you know, you've got to be a bit careful because at vulnerable, Going a couple off is a bottom. Okay, so if you only had seven tricks here and you ended up in it doubled, you might find yourself getting a bottom for losing 500. Okay, your other option on the hand is opening one spade. That is okay. Okay, but generally, if you open strong bids, your partner is going to be expecting a generally strong hand. Just to explain, if you played Benji, the system I've been talking about, you are not allowed to open this hand two clubs. That is the, the rules that, um, that are dictated by the EBU. You can, you can just clear that with David Stevenson, but I think you have to have five quick tricks or um, 15, uh, is it 15 or 16 high card points? So this hand only has what is called four quick tricks. That's an ace, a king, and a king. Okay. Two diamonds is different, I guess, but again, here you are not, it's not a game forcing hand as such here. You know, you need, I guess, if you gave your partner exactly the queen of hearts, it would, okay. All right, so it must have five controls here, and we don't have it. Okay. Um, so, I mean, let's look at the, uh, uh, well, I'll open all the hands so you can see this is an example hand. And interestingly on this hand, your opponents can actually make five clubs. So um, I, would, I would open it four spades and I think that would win the auction. It would go four spades, pass, pass, pass. Um, but on, if you open it anything else, um, you know, one spade, for example, it will go uh, probably uh, may, may even double for takeout west or two clubs or whatever, and they will finish in, they might reach five clubs, um, which as you can see is nice and comfortable for them. Uh, and we make the two tricks that we know we can make, as it were, the ace and king of hearts. But the vulnerability is important here. If I was non-vulnerable against vulnerable, I would feel I'm too strong to open four spades, so I might choose to open just one, which is not ideal, and then of course they would get involved, etc. But I mean, that's the, the vulnerability for you. Um, 
you know, because non-vulnerable against vulnerable, I will open four spades on very aggressive hands. Okay, so uh, take the ace and king of hearts away and the jack and ten of spades and make them two small spades. I'm going to be opening four spades non-vulnerable against vulnerable, so we will end up missing a lot of slams if I open it with this hand, okay? As, as, as Will's saying there, in the old-fashioned system of strong twos, Okay, you are, you would have been, I, I wouldn't want to do it, but you would have been allowed to open this hand two spades. Okay, because the problem with Benji is, and the reason why they the, the rules are there, okay, is that because it's showing any suit and it's supposed to be a strong hand, it, the, the definition is I have eight playing tricks and a strong general hand. That's the idea, you know, that, you, that your partner is usually placing you with the equivalent of 20 high card points. So 18 plus six, six card suit, that kind of thing. So the whole table is assuming there's 20 points and therefore we are able to play accordingly. If you open two clubs with this hand, you're sort of misleading East and West. It's a little bit tricky, but, but um, that's that. Nobody's going to kill you blindly if you open two clubs on this because you're not cheating. That's important. You're not cheating, okay? You are just not completely understanding you know, the rules of bridge. And if anybody accuses you of cheating, please, please report them to me or David or something like that, because there's no, it's clear that anybody who opens two clubs on the south hand thinks they're doing just a normal bid. And that is perfectly reasonable. It's just uh, the way, and I don't really understand the rules in a way. What they're trying to do is protect opponents. For example, I have seen someone with ace, king, queen, jack to eight hearts Ace, King, Queen, Jack to eight hearts and nothing else open two clubs. And it turned out on the hand that the opponents could make a slam, but they just couldn't bid it because the auction had went gone two clubs and actually, believe it or not, there was a positive response with King, Queen to six spades. Um, and so how can you bid a slam if, if the opponents are bidding strong, strong? But anyway, um, that's another matter. OK, so um, just to quickly give you the bidding quiz and then I'll look at some beginners stuff. So I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget, plenty going on. If you if you want to watch us on Friday on um, for the members there, that's nine o'clock. I'm on, but of course you can watch it any time you wish. And uh, we've got our teams as usual on the Wednesday at seven thirty. That's the special. So those non non members, you can get that at half price. So don't forget that. If you fancy joining us on Wednesday, please do. Here's your bidding quiz before I had a, a head off to the beginners. And don't forget, we're trying to um, promote the beginners on. On, on, on the site, uh, so they've got free access um, for, I think, uh, a month, and that's free of charge. Don't even have to give their card details, so do encourage them to come and see. Okay. So, one spade you open, it goes two diamonds pass, three diamonds. Here's the bidding quiz then, and you can see that answer. Uh, you can see that answer when uh, when you look online, of course, or whether you're a member or non-member. So you open a spade, two diamonds pass, three diamonds, and it's your bid. Okay, so have a nice week. Hopefully see you at some point. Uh, and I'm going to look at some beginners stuff here. Uh, last week, last week, we talked about top tricks. We are now going to increase our number of tricks. So when you're making a plan as the declarer, the first thing you do is you count your top tricks. Those are tricks you can make without doing anything. If you stop the play there and someone came along, they'd say, oh, you've got some aces there, some kings there. You can make that many tricks. After you've counted your top tricks, you need to make a plan to increase your tricks and that is the crux of your plan. So let's look at what we mean by that. So I've put you in three no trumps here. Now, those of you uh, who have played mini bridge or the bridge players out there, etc. Obviously, you'd look at those two hands and you've got a lot of hearts between you and you might want to play in hearts, but I'm telling you, you're playing in three no trumps. So we're going to make a plan for a no trump contract. And there's a good reason for it, as you'll see. So you need to count your top tricks first. Okay, so there are no top tricks in spades because you don't have an ace. There are the ace and king of hearts, the ace of diamonds, 
and the ace king queen of clubs. They will definitely make without any effort. Okay, notice that king and ace together in hearts, although they're in different hands, because you are playing the two hands together, they count. So six top tricks. The next part of the plan is to increase tricks. And what I've done here is given you the three different elements that can allow you to increase your tricks in a no trump contract. First of all, there is the spade suit. In the spade suit, you can use your high cards to establish extra tricks. You have the king, queen, jack, and 10. Once the ace is gone, surely you've got three winners there. And we'll look at that closely in a moment. In hearts, you have great length in hearts. And if you've got great length, hopefully, the well, not hopefully, the opponents will not have such length. You have nine, your opponents just have four between them. So I think you might make extra heart tricks once the opponents have run out of hearts. And in diamonds, we have a finesse. That is a technique that we've already looked at um, in previous sessions, the finesse. You could lead towards the ace-queen combination in diamonds and hope to make two tricks from them by surrounding the king. Okay, but do look back at the finesse from earlier. So let's look at the high cards. Here is a layout of the suit. Okay, and what we would do is we would keep playing our high cards until South plays the ace. Let's, let's see if, let's let South take the ace on the first trick and just clarify. So we lead the king, of course it's the low one played. South wins the ace, so we've had to establish it. We've knocked out the ace, but once the ace has gone, we have three winners. Nobody can beat the queen, the jack and the ten, because the ace and king have gone. So we've wasted one of our high cards, but we were happy to do it to establish three more tricks. Okay, so that is using our high cards. And in our plan, because we had the king, queen, jack, ten, we would have suggested that we would expect to make three extra tricks from spades. Establishing long suits. Well, you can see the layout of the suit here. On a lucky day, each of your opponents will have two hearts. What that means is when you play the ace and king, let's do it, all of your opponent's hearts will have disappeared, which leaves you with three more winners. That's lovely. But the problem is it's not so easy to work at work that out than it is with that spade suit. With the spade suit, with the king, queen, jack, ten, you knew you were going to make three tricks. In this heart suit, the number of tricks you make depends on how many hearts your opponents have. So let's change it. Can you see? Here, I've given north three hearts and south one heart. We can still make extra tricks. We can play the ace and king of hearts off. And let's see what's left. The queen is still outstanding, but we're going to play another trick. We will play another heart and get rid of the queen. So let's do it. Okay. And now we have two winners left. Not quite as many as last time. When the hearts broke two and two, we were able to make three extra winners. But this time we've still made extra winners, but just two of them. So the number of extra winners you make depends on the distribution. Now the question is, do you need to be a mathematician? Yes and no is the answer to that. Probably no really, but a little bit of yes. You do not need to know the probabilities accurately. You just have to have some intuitive idea of what's normal. So what I've written here is an odd break is more likely than an even break. Well, what I mean by that is if there are four cards out, how might those cards break? Well, there's four of them, so I, I assume they could be four in one hand and none in the other, three in one hand and one in the other, or two and two, and that's what I've written there. But what's interesting, is in a way you could write there two other things. You could write four nil and 
nil four, three one, and one three. And because of that, we find that generally the cards are more likely to break relatively evenly. Okay. But when you've got an absolutely even break, funnily enough, well, can you do it? Can you put them in the order, order of likelihood? Which do you think is the most likely of those three breaks? Three one is the most likely because an odd break is slightly more likely than an even break. Okay. 2-2 two, two is relatively likely as well. Extreme breaks, though, are very unlikely. So a 4 nil break is very unlikely, and I hope you're happy with that. Okay, But you don't need to have a degree in statistics. All you need to do is have a vague idea that the most common breaks are the more, more level breaks. So both 2-2 two, two and 3-1 are very common breaks. 3-1's a bit more common. If you are missing five cards, the breaks are 3-2, 4-1, 5-nil, etc. 3-2 would be the most popular, then 4-1, 5-0, very unlikely. Okay, so in, we tend to focus on the more evenly breaks, okay, and understanding a little about that helps. But do not be frightened about it. Please don't be frightened about it. So what we've talked about there is making extra tricks. It is something that comes up every single time you play a contract. Top tricks increase tricks and we'll carry on looking at that we're also next week we will look at it with a suit contract in mind so i've looked at no trumps there we saw three different ways of establishing tricks suit contracts i'm afraid there's even more well thank you for your company um, i hope that helped whether you're a beginner or uh, a normal player etc and see you again soon thank you